So there was, there was nothing in his um, father's behavior, his demeanor, that no, would no. suggest he was prone to violence? No, no, no. His okay. father is a good, very good person, and you know, he's, he's friendly for other people also coming here, and his father to shake hand for everybody. Well, I'm at 43 Thorncliffe Park Drive in the east end of Toronto, and this is allegedly where the gunman lived, on the seventh floor specifically. Um, minutes ago, the forensic unit showed up to do their investigation, and we're going to hang here and hope that the police have some kind of statement to make, and also ask if any of the bystanders that have gathered here tonight uh, know, perhaps, who this gunman is, and maybe what his motivation would have been for carrying out such a heinous act last night. Excuse me, guys. Did any of you know the name uh, Faisal Hussein? No? No? Okay, then. All right, then. How about you fellas? Anything? No? Okay, no problem. Um, yeah. Hi, ladies. Just wondering, um, have you, do you know the name Faisal Hussein by any chance? No, I don't no. know. Okay. No. I don't that, know anything. That's the information we have, ma'am, about who the gunman was. Nobody like here. Oh, okay. I'm actually, I'm living in that building, but I don't know anybody. Don't know anybody. Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right. Thank you, then. No. Okay, then. Uh, uh. Hi, folks. Do any of you live in this building? or? Yeah. We, we've heard that the name of the gunman is Faisal Hussein. Uh, any, does that ring a, name ring a bell? No. Faisal, I'm sorry, <laughs> I mispronounced it. Anyone know that name? Faisal Hussein? No? Okay. All right. Thank you, anyways. Some people come here and then they apply, what do you call this? Uh, they want to leave refugee cases and, yeah, they okay. have to take care for these. That too. Oh, Who so is this? Uh, what is the past and what is. Uh, Are you saying maybe some of the people that come here, they do not subscribe to Canadian values? Hmm, exactly, yeah. I'm telling, yeah. And yeah. We ran into a couple of gentlemen who said that they are fairly certain that Faisal Hussein attended a mosque here at 65 Thorncliffe Park. That's just up the road, of course, from 43. Uh, so we're going to try to visit that mosque and see if there's anyone there, and if there is, if they can perhaps tell us a little bit about Faisal Hussein. I'm with Mr. Patel. He is a worshipper at the mosque that uh, Faisal Hussein uh, evidently went to. And uh, Mr. Patel, you were telling me that um, you don't, uh, you haven't seen uh, that person here, but you are uh, familiar with his father. Yes, I, I know his father uh, is a long time, maybe two, three years. Okay, then. Yeah. And how would you describe his father? His father. Uh, is uh, like uh, not bo too much body, but he's sick. He's a uh, he's shaking hand, and you know that's something sickness. I don't know. I see. So he's yeah. had health issues, and uh, his father, yeah. But uh, you know, he's a uh, he's very polite guy. Oh, very polite. Yeah, yeah very polite guy. Yeah. And um, uh, you're mentioning Faisal has a brother who was in hospital for a year, I believe. Yes, uh, he's uh, in uh, Osawa Hospital before. Now they moved to Sunnybrook Hospital. Okay. And but uh, one day, one time, one day he told me to drop me on uh, Osawa Hospital, and then I drop him, okay. you know, uh, Osawa Hospital. But after somebody told me, they moved to Sunnybrook Hospital. Okay. And uh, you know, I see personally his father is a good person. He come to before here pray also come here sometime. And you know he's a good person. So there was there was nothing in his um, father's behavior, his demeanor that would suggest he was prone to violence. No, no, no. His father is a good, very good person, and you know he's he's friendly for other people also coming here, and his father to shake hand for everybody. Okay. Yeah. What do you think his father is feeling given what happened last night on the Danforth? I don't know. I am not see him now until okay. I am not see his father, but. Uh, I, I feel very sorry that boy do it like this. That uh, you know is, I feel very sorry that one. You know for his humanity, yes. it's no good for you know for uh, we are living here this society and you know this city is a good city. You know for but you know it happened for like this. Uh, somebody told me that uh, that guy is a depression. Oh, like he had uh, depression issues. Uh, depression issues. Somebody told me that one. I don't know exactly, but you know. He's a, he's a sick for depression. So I, I guess, you know, with these kind of cases, you wonder if it's mental illness or if it's somebody that's been radicalized 
Would you care to take a guess what it could be? He's a is a depression guy, but otherwise, you know, I, I don't know any idea for uh, that boy for what uh, what's going on and what I don't know that one. But I know his father only, okay. and uh, it is, his father is a very good person. He come all the time. I'm pray here last se seven years here, and you know, he's, uh, he's come sometime and he's a very good person. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Patel, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, then take yeah, care. Thank you. thank you very much. Okay. Well, I'm on Danforth Avenue, right in front of the Dimitris, where the atrocity of last night took place just 24 hours ago. Now, to those who haven't been to Toronto's Danforth Avenue, this is one of the most vibrant streets in all of Toronto. It's jam-packed full of restaurants and pubs, bakeries, boutiques. It's one of the best streets to go on a hot summer night. But last night, for the second time in three months, terror once again reared its ugly head on the streets of Toronto. Now in the aftermath we found out who the gunman is. It's 29 year old Faisal Hussein and his family has already issued a very polished statement about his motivation or potential motivation for the crime namely that he was suffering from severe mental illness. Now I'm not sure everyone is buying that a few questions arise in the aftermath. For example, why is it that this statement sound like, sounds like it came from a PR agency? Secondly, if this was merely a mentally ill man, why was he known to police? And thirdly, why did CSIS, Canada's intelligence agency, last night offer help to the Toronto police if, again, this was merely a mentally ill individual? These are the questions that need to be answered in the days ahead, and you have to wonder if we will really ever get the answers. For the Rebel.media, I'm David Menzies. Hey folks, you may have heard the Rebel has a brand new app. Please download the Rebel app and take the Rebel with you wherever you go.